Simple Steps Smart Rip 4.0. In this session, we're going to take a look at interlocking halftones for better screen printing. And we're getting into an actual print here, a client supplied file that we worked with, with one of the screen printing shops that we work with. And this is actually a shop that works with very basic equipment, but yet can print at a very high level or very high end level. And we're going to see that in this session. Actually, any shop working with the right type of halftones and the right understanding of color can print at a very high level. It's really not that difficult. Go ahead and take a look at this video here. And here on the left is the actual client supplied vector art. And here on the right is the actual screen print. Now this looks a bit light in here, but that's actually the reflection from the flash on the Plastisol ink. But you can see that the two are almost identical. And we can see closer here in a close up how well the color blends were working out. Here's an actual shot from the video. And here's some different pictures. Here's the white base. Here's the red and the orange printed. And then here's the red, orange and the blue and the green printed together. And we've actually got some video on all this. We'll get to that in just a minute. I would like to lay a foundation here relating to Flamenco, which is basically an industry standard in screen printing and how that would be different from working with interlocking. Because in this session, this is what we want to understand. We also want to understand where and how to use the interlocking in our graphics. But here I've got an original image, which this is based on the visible spectrum of light or color going from red to yellow to green to cyan to blue to magenta and then back to red. Now here's the same original image separated to halftones, flamenco, which is basically the concept of flamenco halftone printing or printing all of the different halftone files or color files to simulations at the same angle, 22 or 22.5. And if we zoom in here and take a look, we can see that we're going to be printing high opacity plastisol directly on top of the dots of high opacity plastisol. In other words, dot on top of dot. And we're also going to get some contamination from our substrate or the background. So this is really going to change what our print or our original is going to look like if we try to work with flamenco halftones. As you can see here, if I take this graphic and I go to bitmaps, convert to bitmaps, 300 dp IRGB anti-aliasing turned on, you'll see what you're going to get here. You can see the orange is not really going to be simulated very well. Things are going to be moved around, shifted, and changed, and you're going to have contamination of the color from the substrate in the background. And at the same time, you're going to have issues relating to ink coverage. Now, here beneath that, down here, I've got an interlocking six color halftones. You can see the difference here. First of all, ink coverage. We're covering the entire area of the graphic with ink, so we're not getting any contamination from the substrate or the background that we're printing on. The next thing is we're actually going to be able to simulate the colors. If I take this graphic and I go bitmap, convert to bitmap, select OK, let that process, and then you can see we're getting a much, much better representation of what the original was working with the interlocking halftones. I'll hit Control Z here. We can see that even with our casino graphic here. And we go here to our halftone preview, and these are the separations that we actually worked with for the project we can see that we would have interlocking halftones here where these orange and the blue are blending. Now you'll notice while we're looking at this, the interlocking is set up here. Now here's the flamenco. Now watch the radical difference. Dot on top of dot and substrate contamination into the color. Radical change. Now this is why working with flamenco, which has been an industry standard in screen printing, really needs to be evaluated and you can work with the interlocking and the flamenco and you can see the difference even in your own shop. But you can see that that's a radical difference in ink coverage and contamination of color from the substrate or the background that you're printing on. So very often I think you know people who have tried to get into simulated process or printing with a lot of half tones and blends or color blends have started to print like that and started having problems like what we saw over here when we did some of the flamenco into bitmaps and they kind of wanted to give up on it. They were frustrated by it because they didn't understand what was going on. But if you take the time to really evaluate what's going on as we did when you know when we were working in our, our research and development for simple steps, we we're looking at you know all of the different things we we're seeing in our shop and other shops and then finally we came up with the interlocking halftones. Now looking at all of this, what I want to do is go ahead and walk you through how I would actually set this up for color separation based on the interlocking. And I've got this file set up here on an untitled document, and we can do the actual separation from simple steps here with the file. First thing I'll do is I'll go to Advanced Tools here, and I'll go to Simple Steps, and we'll go ahead and open that up. Then the next thing I'll do is I want to do some evaluation. 
This has already been all converted to Pantone, so I'm not going to have to worry about that. So I'll be working from the separations tab. I can go ahead and minimize this, and then bring this right back up here. I'm going to have red blending into orange, blending into blue, blending into green, blending back into blue and into orange, and then magenta, which also blends down here into the orange, and then the light green blending into the dark green. So looking at all these blends, I can say to myself, well, the best way for me to do this is the orange is going to interlock into the red and the blue, and then the light green is going to interlock into the blue, but then I'd have the orange with the interlock over that. So what I'll do is where this is orange, because I'm going to trick my separations, one of the most valuable aspects, I guess you could say, of simple steps is that you can do very versatile things with it. You're not locked into, this is my graphic, hit the print button, and the halftones come out on the film. Here you get to actually work with your halftones and your films working in Corel's Raw. And that's one of the benefits and one of the reasons that we developed simple steps because having halftone previews and being able to actually work with your halftone files is absolutely critical for screen printing. But here I'm going to have the green. So I go with the interlock and the orange, and I'll have an interlock here on this orange, plus the light green interlock. I'll have interlock on top of interlock dot, and I don't want that. So I'll go ahead to my interactive fill tool here, and I'll replace this green with, say, this Pantone 102C. I'm going to trick this, or that yellow. Now, that being the case, I'm going to leave that 102C just fine, and I'll copy that back into my orange plate after I finish the separation. So with that all set, I'll go back here to my simple steps. I'll go to my separations tab. I'll go to half tones. I'll create a white base. This will generate this automatically. I want this untitted. Going to want a solid base. We'll choke that. Say two pixels. And then I'll come down through here. My light green. I'm going to interlock that. And I'm going to come down here to my orange. And I'm going to interlock that. And I'm going to select all black. And then I'm going to click on and generate separations. And we'll let Simple Steps automatically create our white base for us with our choke, along with all of our halftone ripped color separations, including our interlocking halftones. Once Simple Steps has finished processing my color separations, I'll have my live halftone preview here. On page one, I'll have my original graphic just so I can compare those. Go back here and take a look at our halftones, and we'll make sure that everything's interlocking correctly, which we can see that all of our halftones are interlocking across the entire graphic. Now here where we've got this yellow, remember that's actually our orange, so what I can do here is I'll just go ahead and see what's on top here. I'll hold down Alt and that lets me select the objects beneath until I get to that yellow, which is right there. And I'll just come right click and change that back to the orange as you can see right there. Now with that yellow, I'm not really going to want that plate. I was tricking it so that I could have up here interlocked orange dots and here not interlocked orange dots so that this orange that we're printing here, even though it's on the same plate or separation, would interlock back into the green here. So what I want to do is I want to go through here to my yellow. Now my yellow, I can look up here in my palette, and that's the 102C. So where's that Pantone 102C? I can just click through the pages here. And that's right here. And I just want to go ahead and take this, copy this, And I'm not going to need this page, so I'll right-click. You can't see it, but I'll come down to Delete Page, and I'll get rid of that page. And I'll go back through my pages here until I get to the 1505C, which is my orange, which I can verify that over here in my Simple Steps palette. I'll go ahead and paste that back in. Now, I usually leave Simple Steps open when I'm doing this because I want to have these palettes available because these palettes are the palettes. This is the plates palette or the palette that the separations are actually generated with. I'll go ahead and put this back here. Now, here with this, you can see that I've got a white background here, but I can just go ahead and left click, and that'll make that background transparent on those halftone separations. So there's my orange setup. So that here I have not interlocking halftones, but up here I do have interlocking halftones. So if I go back to my halftone preview, I can see that everything is going to be interlocking perfectly. Now, for the sake of the video here, I didn't set up my dot gain in simple steps. Now, the dot gain is very important. I actually put 1.75 on this for the actual print that the shop we were working with did of this print because I didn't really have any information recorded on their halftones. So we just went with a 1.75. But if you haven't done your dot gain test, I would suggest a minimum of 1.75. And if you need some training on the dot gain, you can find that back here 
um, under the Simple Steps Smart Rip 4 and there's a video here on setting up your custom dot gain curve or you can just work with the simple settings that are available in Simple Steps Smart Rip. So there we can see that we've done our separations and everything's going to be interlocking including our orange. Go ahead and take a look at our video and see how the actual print came out. And here we can see our screen printer. They've got their print set up here. They've already printed the white and the red, but there goes the orange, and that was had the interlock, both the interlock and non-interlock. There goes the blue, that was not interlocked. Here comes the light green, that was interlocked. And printing on a basic table press here, you really don't need fancy equipment to be able to print high end. Here comes the magenta. And then finally, I believe we're gonna see here our dark green being printed. All this with interlocking halftones, and there you have the final print. After watching the video, we can see that our screen printer was able to get a very good reproduction of the customer supplied art. And this is actually a screen capture of the video, um, of an image of the video at the end where the screen printer was showing the t shirt. We can see that you got a very good reproduction or recreation of the original art of the customer very effectively, even with all these color blends or simulated process style printing, working with the interlocking halftones available from Simple Step Smart Rip 4.0. And I think after looking at the comparison of interlocking versus the flamenco, we can see why we want to be working with interlocking, especially when we're going to be doing high end or printing that involves gradients or color blends. We'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll see you in our next video.